In Britain today, we are used to seeing the NHS campaigns encouraging us to donate blood. Yet there are groups in society today who are denied the right to help others and save lives. In the 1980s, the nation faced a surge in HIV contamination and thousands of NHS patients contracted the virus from contaminated blood donations. Society was quick to blame the homosexual community, with 1 in 20 having the virus compared to 1 in 1,000 heterosexuals, and a lifetime ban was put into effect preventing all gay men from donating blood. But following a review by the Advisory Committee on the Safety of Blood, Tissues and Organs, gay men will now be able to donate blood, provided that they haven't had sex in over a year. I'm on a mission to find out whether this change in law is considered a wise move and is accepted by everyone affected. Now, as the law stands, there is a 12-month deferral period for gay men to give blood. But before then, gay men couldn't give blood full stop. Today, we're going to meet a guy who cheated the system and gave blood. Let's go and meet him. How are you doing, all right? Right, yeah. Good, good. Now, you gave blood. Uh, tell me a bit about that. Okay, well, um, the first time I went to give blood, um, after seeing all the adverts on the television and the internet and stuff, I went to the website and um, started filling out their online form with all the questions. And then the first time I filled it out, I selected that um, I was gay. And at that point, it told me that I couldn't give blood. Um, then a couple of months later, I needed to um, find out my blood type for the job I was going for and I wasn't willing to pay, so I thought I may as well go give blood, get my blood type and give um, something back to the NHS at the same time. Obviously the, the law stood at the time that gay men couldn't give blood, so what you were doing was breaking the law. So how does that make you feel? Did you be remorseful? Uh, not at all, no, because it's a ridiculous law and it has no ground, so it's just like an outdated law that should, be ch should have been changed years ago, but just because of chances doesn't mean you shouldn't be able to. One in 20 gay men do have HIV, so the safe checks are there for a reason. So, so do you, you know, but would you would you still have given blood if you knew that statistic? Yeah, because that's, that's exactly why the safe checks are there. Even if it was one in a hundred or whatever the heterosexual rate is of having HIV, they still have a chance of transmitting. They have a test there to detect it, so I don't see any difference at all there. So we met Ollie. He's not remorseful about what he's done. It's so it's interesting when asking him these questions what his responses are. I think that making him feel a little bit uncomfortable is necessary to you know to get his views, to get his opinions. Uh, you know, and just find out the truth. But when asked about if he's remorseful, then he just answered no, pretty much. And his reason was that is, as long as the safeguards are in place, why shouldn't gay men give blood? It's not up to me to decide whether or not it's right or wrong, what he's done and what he's saying, but it's sort of like me saying, I'm a good driver, therefore I won't have an accident. You know, there's always gonna be that risk, but there we go. The Liberal Democrats party are most pro-gay blood donation, so to see if they had any role in the recent law change and whether or not they're campaigning for further change, we're going to speak to Liberal Democrat MP Martin Hornwood. The focus of this interview is to find out uh, your, your views and your party's views on gay men giving blood yeah. um, and the pros and cons around that. Um, so firstly, where as a party do Liberal Democrats stand uh, in, in the debate whether gay men should donate blood? We've always been very supportive of uh, permitting gay men to give blood. Um, it's something that our youth, uh, wing, Liberal Youth, has campaigned on. It's something where it was pretty clear that it was just prejudice and, and uh, kind of outdated attitudes that were stopping something which would help to save lives. Okay. And how do you feel about the current 12-month deferral period? Well, I think you have to trust the blood transfusion uh, services medical and scientific judgment. If they think that's really necessary now, well, okay. Um, but personally, I would like to see that reduced because that's quite a, quite a big restriction um, and it would be better to, to allow, with all the right safety checks, gay men to give blood uh, as much as possible because we need the blood, actually. It's, it's a vital resource. Are you, are you campaigning for that uh, reduction? Well, I'm not. Personally, um, it's not one of the issues that I'm campaigning on. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but the party as a whole and, and Liberal Youth, I know, would be quite happy to see that reduced, and so I'd be very supportive of that position. So, uh, Adnan's view with Martin Horwood, I've got to say, he's quite an intimidating man. Um, a lot of eyes staring. Uh, but, you know, what he said, you know, he's fully supportive, his party is very supportive. You know, but there, you know, there's still a lot of work you know that needs to be done scientifically to you know to so medically justify that gay men can give blood. But I think it's a step in the right direction. Liberal Democrats are behind it, so all good. Okay, so who I'm ringing right now is the blood donation service to find if we can get an interview with them. So wish me luck. I tried arranging an interview with the local blood clinic, National Blood Service, NHS Hospitals and the NHS Trust, all claiming they were unavailable for interview. Sit on hold. Oh, here we go. Right, okay. Alright, not a problem. Okay, thank you very much for your help. Alright, bye bye. So that's the third time we've rung them and still no one to talk to us, so we'll have to be a bit devious and find other ways. Originally, I contacted Peter Tatchell, a gay rights activist for Outrage, but he was unavailable. Instead, he put me in touch with his colleague, David Allison, who also works for Outrage. So I'm off to London to get his views on the subject. Just tell me a bit about your organisation, um, what, you know, what you campaign for. Well, principally, we're an online and direct action group that was founded about 20 odd years ago uh, in consequence of the various what we saw as homophobic legislation introduced by the then Tory government led by Margaret Thatcher. There has been a recent legislation change back in November last year about uh, gay men being able to give blood yeah. uh, with a 12 month deferral period. Uh, what, how, what are your thoughts on that? Well, we think initially there was a panic when AIDS and HIV and all the rest of it hit the headlines all these years ago and the newspapers were running stories about the gay plague. Well, we met uh, a young lad, a gay lad called Ollie, who, who cheated the system and gave blood but lied on the application form. What, what, would, would you encourage that? What, what are your thoughts about that? If you're gay, by signing that form, you're denying yourself. That's no way should you uh, refuse to accept the fact or to admit the fact or acknowledge the fact that you are gay. Uh, and beating the system is not a game that you should be playing. If you offer blood and it's refused because you are gay, you've expressed your desire to be a responsible citizen, but also behaved in a responsible fashion. What do you think the future holds for gay men being able to give blood? I think in the long term, these prejudices will gradually be eliminated from, from society. And hopefully, as time passes, the means of be absolutely 100% certain of the purity of blood uh, will become both pretty much an accepted fact. Him and Martin are on the same page. I think David more passionate than Martin. He knows what he's talking about. That's why he's a campaigner. But he does understand that it will take time, but the government is listening. Throughout this journey, I've been looking for the counter-argument whether it is wrong for gay men to give blood. All medical staff appear to be unavailable or not qualified to speak to me further about this. Therefore, we are left to speculate their side of the argument, leaving me under the impression that everyone is pro-gay men giving blood. The only people I have been able to talk to on this journey have all been of different occupation and background, and yet all seem to agree that gay blood donation is the way forward and will one day make it into society. However, as I've experienced, the NHS seem to be resistant to cooperate and so such change may be a long way off in the future. One thing I can take away from this experience is that there is a certainty that all gay men will one day have the right to save lives with their blood without any restrictions.